Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on the introduction to cellular respiration. You should have already watched the video on the ATP cycle. That ATP cycle is pictured here, and that's where we have our high energy molecule, ATP, which transfers one of its phosphates to another molecule to allow the other molecule to do cellular work. That regenerates a molecule, I should say that generates a molecule called ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, and then another phosphate has to be added back onto that molecule to regenerate ATP. The energy for doing this, for putting a phosphate back on the ADP to make ATP, comes from food. And the process responsible for allowing this to happen is called cellular respiration. It's really important to point out here that cellular respiration is distinct from breathing, and many students have a hard time with this. So the process of inhaling oxygen and exhaling CO2, that is breathing. That oxygen then goes into the lung, diffuses into the blood, diffuses into the cells, and then cells use that oxygen to break down glucose to make ATP. That's the process of cellular respiration. Carbon dioxide is a product of cellular respiration, which diffuses back into the blood, into the lung, and is exhaled again by breathing. So where does cellular respiration occur? It occurs in both the cytoplasm and the mitochondria. So if we look at our diagram of a cell here, we have our cytoplasm where all of our organelles are. And then this organelle is the mitochondria. And here is a blown up version of that mitochondria. It has a fairly complex structure. It has a membrane here that's called the inner membrane, and it's folded into these folds that are sometimes called Christi. I'm going to use the term inner membrane because I think it's more explanatory. There is also an outer membrane, which is in this darker purple. And then there's a space in between the membranes, and it's called the intermembrane space. It's very important that you realize this is the word is inter, which means between. Very often students will label this as the inner membrane space, and that is incorrect because it is the space in between the inner and outer membranes. The final space is called the matrix, and this is the most interior space inside of the inner membrane. You should be able to label all of the membranes and spaces in a mitochondria. So cellular respiration is the process of breaking down glucose using oxygen. And the formula, the balanced equation for respiration, is shown here. You should know this balanced equation. This compound here is glucose, and we get that from food. This is oxygen, of course, we breathe in during our inhale process. And then the two products, water and carbon dioxide, are exhaled in our breathing process. So cells perform this process of breaking down glucose with oxygen and forming water and carbon dioxide in a series of many small reactions linked together in something called a pathway. So this is the pathway for the breakdown of glucose, which is right here, and it's just the beginning part of the pathway. It doesn't break it all the way down into CO2 and oxygen, but it's many, many steps. And the, why does a cell do this in so many small steps? It's so that the cell can harvest all the energy and glucose. If the cell just burned it all up, like we're just burning up some sugar here, that would lose much of the energy as heat. And the cell does this in a very small controlled reactions so they can harvest all of the energy and glucose. Much like the way that this chimney tower is being broken down in a very controlled process as opposed to just blowing it up. So why is glucose a high energy molecule? Well, let's look at our glucose molecule here. This is in its linear form. Glucose can be shown in both a linear and a ring form. It's easier to see the bonds in the linear form. So what we see here is there are a lot of carbon-hydrogen bonds, and neither carbon nor hydrogen are very electronegative elements, if you remember from your chemistry days. Oxygen, on the other hand, is a very electronegative element. So the electrons that are in these carbon-hydrogen bonds are kind of loosely held because neither one, the carbon nor the um, hydrogen, is really holding onto it really tightly. That's as opposed to an oxygen, which is extremely electronegative. It is very tightly holding onto all of its electrons. 
It's really hard to get an electron from oxygen because it's so electronegative. It's not very hard to get an electron for carbon and hydrogen because they aren't very electronegative. So glucose is considered a high energy molecule because the electrons in these carbon hydrogen bonds are not tightly held. They're really easy to remove and there are a lot of those carbon hydrogen bonds. The goal of cellular respiration is to harvest those electrons, those ones in the not tightly held bonds, and harvest those from glucose, and then use them to put that phosphate back on the ADP, but it does this in a very indirect manner. But it's really efficient. Cells are able to make between 36 and 38 ATPs from the breakdown of every glucose molecule. So cellular respiration actually occurs in three phases, and each of those phases has many, many steps. The first phase is called glycolysis, and it occurs in the cytoplasm. And you can see this is even an abbreviated um, form of what actually goes on in glycolysis. The next form is called, or the next process is called the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. It has two names because citric acid is one of the intermediates in the cycle, so that's why it's often called the citric acid cycle. But it's also called the Krebs cycle in honor of the person who deciphered every reaction in this process and was awarded the Nobel Prize. So this citric acid or Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix, which is the innermost space of the mitochondria. The final phase is called the electron transport chain it is sometimes also called chemiosmosis. I am going to call it the electron transport chain. And it occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So the process is actually embedded in the membrane. So from tonight's video, you should know the difference between cellular respiration and breathing. You should be able to label all the membranes and all the spaces in the mitochondria. You should know why cells break down glucose in many steps as opposed to all at once. You should know why glucose is a high energy molecule. And you should know where the energy is in glucose. It's in those electrons. And you should know the three phases of cellular respiration and where in the cell they occur. So that's all for tonight.